Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and this is a report on Louis Howard having his marijuana charges of possession withdrawn in Simcoe, Ontario this morning. So a little bit of background. We have Louis Howard who applied for his exemption in August, was busted in September, got in October or November, and was still in court being bounced around. Uh, them trying to get a plea out of him, no doubt. And finally, he filed an application to quash his charges on the grounds that the offense didn't exist, no offense, when there was a bad exemption, because he could now see, due to the Svetkopoulos case and the Barron case at the Supreme Court, that said the exemption was goofed up the same way as the first time, except not two years, but eight years. And uh, now the Maloney case in St. Catharines, where the judge said it's been goofed up a third way, the bad exemption, and no offense. So the first Beano decision in Ontario, linking the two. <clears throat> so he was in court today, and uh, we, we popped in. Uh, supporters were Derek Francisco, who had been in exactly the same situation, busted, then got his exemption, but then got all his marijuana and equipment back because by getting an exemption, he proved he was sick, and that meant he was sick at the time of the bust too, and so he got his exemption at marijuana back seven months later. And then we had Gerald Fox and Mark McDonald, two guys who were busted and had their marijuana seized, and then they had their charges withdrawn, but then the Crown had destroyed their marijuana, so they're now suing for the cash value, which is a section under the CVSA they can do, at the numbers that the government uses, too. So uh, they were there in support, and Kathy Lewis and Mike Spottiswood from London, again, two people, medical users, and another possible fighter in there, uh, to witness what went on. So we're all there, and Wayne Robinson, of course, uh, who filed all the papers and got it organized. So we go into the courthouse, and... Uh, as uh, we're waiting for the court to call us in the hallway, I start passing out some flyers saying, anybody here for marijuana? This guy's going to have his charges dropped today, and I'm passing them out, you know. And quite a few people took them. So anyway, Kathy Lewis grabbed uh, Louie, took him outside to a calm area, and got him ready with his papers. Because as soon as the charges were announced, withdrawn, he wanted to file his application, Section 241, for the return of his medicine. Because if he was sick, especially when his doctor signed before, he should be able to have it back. So anyway, that's a perfect situation, you know, when you think about it. So um, <clears throat> then I'm here in the hallway and I hear, uh, duty counsel, anybody need duty counsel? So I think, okay, why not? Well, if Louie's a little concerned and worried about it, I'll ask the duty counsel to make sure that a motion gets in. So I grab Louie and... Uh, Kathy says, should we go too? And I said, sure, the more witnesses, the merrier. So we go in to see this duty counsel, a guy about my age, maybe a little younger. And uh, I said to him, look, at this is uh, Louis Howard, uh, marijuana possession charge. And he says, yeah, I heard that, you know, kick it around the courts for the last little while. Uh, like, what's going on? So I said, here's a letter from the Crown Attorney saying they're withdrawing the charges. <laughs> So anyway, and I said, now here's an application he wants to file for the return of his marijuana. And the guy says, you got to be exempted. You exempted? And Louie went, yeah. And then the guy said, well, wait a minute now. Were you exempted when the bust happened? He went, no. He said, ah, and you weren't exempted when the marijuana was seized, so you can't have it. And I said, whoa, here's the Derek Francisco case. And I said, you know, Hitzig? And he facetiously said no. So I just continued and said, Hitsig 170 just says you've got to prove medical need and you are exempt. And of course, the example is Johnny Dupree's case where they wouldn't give him an exemption. So he brought his doctor and his medical file to the judge. The judge went agreed, you're sick enough and you're sick enough then too, not guilty. So he's saying the same thing. And the guy's taken aback. I said, here's the Francisco decision. Judge Reese Morgan, you know, seven months after his bus, signed him over his marijuana. I said, he wants the same thing. Then they hear a call. Okay, you're wanted duty counsel in the courtroom. So as he's uh, rushing off, he says, okay, you just give me the stuff and I'll do it. And I said, okay, and we'll see how you do. So in the courtroom later, uh, he did quite well, actually, you know. Uh, they called, uh, oh, interesting thing. 
Who's on the bench but Justice of the Peace Malloy, M-U-L-L-O-Y, who I had last year during preliminaries to my getting my uh, uh, uttering threats and uh, uh, causing a disturbance charges outside the high school during the municipal election with being withdrawn. And uh, finally, but he was the guy who wouldn't let me use a tape recorder and said, I'll give you a free transcript instead. Well, I've already got that appealed as not good enough with Parker, so now I've got his decision appealed as not good enough, too, going on. And here he is on the bench when I get in there, and I'm saying, ho, ho. Anyway, um, they call Louis, he comes up, and the duty council jumps up and says, Your Honor, it seems that they're going to be withdrawing the charges, and when they do, he wants to file his motion for the return of his medicine. And uh, the Crown jumps up and says, yes, in the public interest, we've decided to withdraw these charges and they can be entered in as withdrawn. And so the GP is going, OK, fine, withdrawn charges. And then the duty counsel says, OK, now this motion here, we should probably put that off a couple of weeks. And of course, the GP doesn't have the power to do it anyway. So rather than send it upstairs, he said, I, you know, he advised it putting it off a couple of weeks so the crowd could look at it. They just got it. And uh, everybody agreed. So um, the lawyer did do us a favor by saying, OK, well, let's make sure it's noted, it's entered, it's been served on the crown as of right now so that they just got to bring a copy upstairs to the clerk without service. And that's how we did it. So. He's going to be heard on June the 28th. That's the date they gave us. So here is the report of what happened later outside. Okay, so the exemptee population of Ontario, a small portion of them are here to support Louis Howard, who was in court this morning. Louis got his doctorate of... Louis got his doctorate of file an exemption for him. Then he was busted. And then he filed this motion to quash because bad exemption means no offense. And then the Crown offered three days later to withdraw the charges. So we're here to have a little celebration as Louis Howard gets his charges withdrawn. But at the same time this morning, he handed in a motion for the return of his marijuana under Section 24.1. Now, originally they thought that if you're not exempted when you're busted, you can't have it back. But you can, because your exemption proves you were sick at the time. And HITSIG 170 just says you got to be sick at the time to be exempt. So he was sick at the time. He then got his exemption. So he showed it. Now he's applying for his marijuana back. The precedent he used was Derek Francisco's precedent, where the judge, after seven months, signed an order returning the guy's pot. So he's saying exactly the same situation as Derek. Not exempt, got busted. God exempt, he got his back, Howard wants his back, and that's what we're happening in two weeks on the 28th of June. We're coming back here to see if he gets his marijuana back. So anyway, we had a fun day today celebrating Louis Howard's withdrawal of charges and uh, possession for the purpose they wanted to hit him with because they say he was trying to barter marijuana for pizza. For hey, pizza. yes sir, hey, that's evil man, man you, you know. Man. You know, kingpin. <laughs> so anyway, this is it. Logging off from Simcoe, Ontario with our latest victory. Not victory, because no judge said Bino. <laughs> Bad exemption, no offense. But at least the Crown knew it enough to withdraw the charges, and we don't lose again. Thanks a lot, everybody. We well, never lose. All right. <laughs> I'm getting mine back, too. Full cool, cola, really. That's hard. right. We also have Gerald going after seven pounds. How much are you going after? Three much, pounds. Much as give me. Three pounds. pounds. And we're going to use the numbers that they suggest mm -hmm. per plant per pound. We think that's only fair. $1,000 a plant. That's right. $1,000 a plant. That's yeah. fair. Or 2400 a pound. pound. That's yeah. right. That's mm -hmm. fair. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. We're charged yeah. with tons, but they weren't done Health Canada can sell their swag for $150 an ounce. Plus HST. That is Howard there's got good shit. So there it is, the Bino defense. Bad exemption equals no offense. Uh, seems to be very effective, especially when you're sick. But don't forget, Ken Surgeon in Windsor wasn't sick, filed his Bino. Bad exemption for them. No offense for me, too. And he withdrew his charges, too. So... We're going into the Court of Appeal 
three appeals uh, status court this morning, and I'm going to point out that we've got these 11 cases, appeals going on, on Bino. They just found out the exemption was bad, and they want their records corrected, or they've been busted, and they've appealed something. So there are 11 of these going on, three of which are going to be discussed in status court in Toronto later this morning. So uh, that will entail another report, but basically I think there might be a chance they might be all consolidated into one big Bino case, so we'll find out.